On the 15th of October 2011, a ragtag gathering of socialists, anarchists, activists, environmentalists, trade unionists and students came together on the steps of St. Paul's to join 85 countries around the world in a global day of action. Here in the austere surroundings of St. Paul's Cathedral, the Occupy the London Stock Exchange protesters have been kettled by police officers. We're not sure why the kettling has occurred, but we're going to go and find out and talk to a few people, hopefully. Okay, so my name's Amy Soika, and um, I'm 22, and I'm a student in the UK. And we're here today because, um, uh, basically, um, this is Occupy London Stock Exchange. Um, it's been very much inspired by what's going on in America with Occupy Wall Street, where you have people um, passionately defending their rights and trying to back, bring about good change and justice in their country. The protest was inspired by the month-long occupation of Wall Street in New York, particularly in the use of the 99% logo, which refers to those who are not the 1% of super-rich whom, demonstrators claim, are running the world economy for their own benefit. Oh, we're supporters of the Occupy movement. Uh, we just want to give support to what people are doing all over the world. New York, for example, that got the attention, I think, and the inspiration of many people who feel like an alternative needs to be found to the current divide that we experience in society between the very, very rich and elite who make most of the decisions for us um, and, and the 99% of people who have to live in the systems that they basically decide for us. Hello, my name's Catherine. I'm a poet. I live in a squat and I'm here because I think the government and the corporations need to recognise that they have ripped us off, that poor people in this country are getting poorer while the rich get richer and that we need to readdress this balance and that we need a real change to happen with the way our system works. Famous faces turned out to offer their support including WikiLeaks mastermind Julian Assange. It's a democratic process that is based on the truth. Now that seems like a very simple and quaint notion and it should be a quaint notion but actually it's a revolutionary notion because we are fed bullshit every day of our lives. Targets were wide and varied, with businesses, banks, free traders and politicians all coming under fire. We do. We want all the money from the banks reinvested in everything caring. Um, we want the military budgets, we want all the, um, all the uh, profits that they're making that they're not paying any taxes on. We don't want half their businesses anyway because we don't want the military business Go on. Businesses should be closed down. They should be. They're, 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 they're a threat to, the, to life on this planet, beginning with nuclear power, which everybody knows is deadly, so that should disappear. And we don't see why, if a woman raising a child is doing the most important central valued work in the world, that should be compared to a soldier who will go and kill that child and get a wage for it. End. Enough of that. No more of that. Uh, yes, we're pacifists to the degree that we have to be, but we're not going to lie down and be rolled over by this lot. In the current economic woes, even interdimensional wizards are starting to fuel the heat. We spoke to one at the demo. Um, you know, it's our planet, and um, you know, we're having it back. <laughs> well, we're just having it, really, because, um, you know, all this society with all this money, 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 work, 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 it's too much, too much, uh, uh, too much work, 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 money, 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 isn't it? Perhaps ironically, for a protest so decidedly critical of the globalisation, numerous artefacts from pop culture were prominent, most notoriously the V for Vendetta masks, which have become a mainstay of demonstrations since they were first used by the online civil disobedience group and hacktivists, Anonymous. though nothing tops the sight of an enormous queue of anti-capitalists piling into Starbucks, which remained open inside the kettle. There was a strong police presence, which presented mixed feelings for everyone involved. And the police! The police are basically... A scum! No, a scum! <laughs> one third of police are good guys, one third of police are bad guys, and one third can go either way on the day. Police are basically working class guys. They're working class guys, they are also fed bullshit, they are co-opted by the system. 
Much of the ire of the protesters focused, perhaps unsurprisingly, on the current Tory-led government. A Prime Minister that can say, you, we need you to tell us if you have an illegal immigrant living next door yes. to you. Oh, that is the policies that the Nazis, the Nazis carried out in the really? 30s to find who were Jewish people, who were trade unionists, who were communists. Those were the self-same policies. And it is incumbent on everybody to stand up and say, we will not accept that. We are not going back to that stuff. Yes. We don't want that kind of a world. That's because right. for everyone who doesn't say that, you are complicit with it. And furthermore, make it easier for them to bring in this kind of stuff. At one point, it seemed as though police were moving in to clear the protesters, although they held their ground in spite of some rather forceful behaviour. At one point, dogs were even brought on the scene. For all the brief sporadic violence, I'd imagine that both protesters and police were relieved that the infamous anarchist black bloc, who have often clashed with officers in previous demos, did not make an appearance. My name's Ian, I'm a student from Leeds, and we're here very specifically to protest against the extent to which the power of the financial services sector determines policy in the UK. We think that the extent to which there is fraud in the financial services sector is a problem in itself, but more importantly the problem is that um, they basically write the policies uh, that the rest of the country has to live on. Okay, and, and you're camping here overnight, is that We're right? camping here overnight. And are you planning on staying here longer than overnight? Or uh, you... Unfortunately, we got to go back to Leeds tomorrow. <laughs> back to real life. Uh, yeah, but we're going to hopefully come back if it's still going. Okay. But we can only hope there's still going to be going. do you know going. how long people are planning on staying? You think there are well, I can only on uh, tell you what it said on Facebook, which said until 12th of December. Right. So I think that's pretty similar to the New York one. The, the proposal yeah, was yeah, three yeah. months. It's been a long time now and, and uh, the people have talked about a lot of subjects and this is the first time that they're talking about the actual problem, the I thing that actually causes all back. those other problems in our okay. world today, and that is the financial system and how it works and how is it going to try and stay here for? Uh, I'll stay here as long as, I, as, long as I'm useful, as long as I can keep on hopefully giving people a little bit of knowledge as to what is going on. Will you camp tonight? Uh, I'll stay out tonight, I haven't brought a camp, but um, I live in London, I can come back, back and forth from here and, and I don't plan on doing this just here. This needs to be, there needs to be people going around all over London and explaining this. In light of these global protests, some may be asking, will capitalism weather the storm as it has always invariably managed to do in past? Or is this the final death knell of a system that many people believe is broken beyond repair?